Not only do we have the White Shadow on DVD to give away, but we got to talk to the star, Ken Howard. Good morning, Ken. Good morning. Hey, you know, it's kind of weird because uh, I, I feel like I know you because you read me uh, The General's Daughter on my drive from uh, Houston to Portland. <laughs> That's, is that, have you ever, and before we get into The White Shadow, I have to ask because um, you don't read these books beforehand. Have you ever gotten, or do you, I mean, do you ever get into a situation where you're reading and then when you get to the end of the book, just like the rest of us, we're like, hey, that's not that great of an ending, but not, you don't have to name any names or anything. Uh, you know, there are, uh, I can't imagine winging it. I always read it ahead of time and get a sense of it. I don't mark it all up with all kinds of things. I mean, I can keep it in my head, but I know some guys have just gone in and winged it. It seems amazing to me to do that, you know, because also what can happen is you're, you're reading and by the, you get to page 143 and you realize the guy was supposed to have a southern accent. You know, if you haven't read it before, oops. Oh, he's from Georgia, you know, so. Uh, they're fun to do. I, my, some of my favorite work, really. You go in a, uh, you know, in a sound studio for a day and you tell a story. Now, so I, I was not familiar with uh, The White Shadow whatsoever, and uh, I started watching the DVDs, and I was amazed at some of the topics you guys were covering back in, was it 79 for the first year? 78 through 81, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was racism, you had mm -hmm. alcoholism, uh, teen pregnancy, you had all kind of stuff. D did the networks ever, I mean, how did, I, I can't even imagine that they would allow stuff like that. Well, uh, it was a battle, and Bruce, Bruce Paltrow was really good at, at fighting for the stuff we wanted, being diplomatic with them, and uh, CBS actually, believe it or not, early on said to us, we really want you to stay away from issues concerning sex, crime, drugs. We said, we said, there's a whole show. I mean, that's what surrounds these kids. And, and slowly but surely with the basketball and adding in humor, we were able to touch on a lot of stuff. And, Did they uh, ever, like, put the hammer down on any one particular subject that didn't make it? Uh, I, I don't remember. Not, not really. There might have been little issues. I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that just made us laugh. You know, they had this rule, everything has to be approved that you're going to say before you shoot it. And that was impossible because we were going to kind of improvise at times, you know, in the, in the locker room and ball games. They were always afraid that, that when everybody was talking at once, somebody was going to slip in some profanity that they were not, weren't going to catch. We said, we're not going to do that. But then there was a phrase that we used, and I can't remember what it was, but it, it had a, a sexual suggestiveness to it. It's a jelly roll or something that has a meaning, you know, a street meaning. Oh, they wouldn't allow that. And the, the, the big guy, uh, Byron Stewart, who played Coolidge, caught wind of this. And he's such a funny guy. And he started making up phrases that meant absolutely nothing, but sounded like they were suggestive and made the standings of, standards and practices people crazy. They were, they were always trying to find out what did, what did that mean? You know, uh, you know, let's go down to the chocolate and juice bar, you know, and make sure there's not a banana in that carrot patch or whatever he was saying. It didn't mean anything. And they would go crazy on it. We can't do that because we know that somehow in the street that's a sexual innuendo. So we had fun with them that way. Uh, are you a fan of DVD commentary? Have you ever you know, gone into that realm before? It's the first time I did that. It was fun seeing Timmy Van Patten uh, again, uh, who played Salami. I hadn't seen him for several years. And he's a, he's a great guy. And so we, we did a lot of the commentary for the one show that we did uh, with him. Yeah, now, how weird was that, though, looking back on 27 years of your life there? You know? It's funny, you know, it's different. For most people, you know, you look at a snapshot or a picture in a yearbook, it's, it's interesting to see yourself, you know, in motion and, and performing. I, actually, uh, the, the fun of it is that I, I can be objective about it in a different way. I can look at it and think, that show's pretty good, and, and that, that tall, skinny guy's not bad, you know, because <laughs> it's so far, far away. I can be a little more object objective about it. Have you ever run into any of the people that were involved in the show years after the fact? All, all of them, really. Uh, uh, here and there, because Thomas Carter's a, a director, and so is Kevin Hooks. Kevin Hooks, yeah, he's like one of my favorites. He does like Alias, and he did Lost. Right. And, and, and uh, so I would see them off and on, and we had a party at one point, uh, and that, and Bruce, Bruce and I, well, he unfortunately died a couple of years ago, but we, we stayed in, in touch a lot, and he was uh, a good friend and, and really key to that whole project because I brought him the idea and was really put it in his hands, and I think he, he did as well as you possibly could with, with what we were trying to do. Now, since people believe everything they see on TV, how many people, or have a lot of people actually thought you were in the NBA? I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> how, 
How long did you play with the Bulls? Part of it, I think, is we got footage that most people couldn't get. I, I was friends with a fellow named John Kobler, who was one of the owners of the Bulls. And we slipped into Chicago in 78 when we were doing the pilot and got some foot, footage of me in a Bulls uniform out on the floor, later sitting next to on the bench talking with Artis Gilmore. And so when people saw that footage, you know, it, it, there's something very real about it. Uh, but, but On that same realm, though, um, how many coaching jobs were offered you after <laughs> the series was over? I loved coaching kids. I did it a lot uh, after the show. I, I liked about that age, you know, uh, 12 years old, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. That was a lot of fun. But no, no, no. Teaching, yes. I, I've, I've gone back and I'll probably go back and teach some more on the college level. And I have to bring up the fact that we've seen you in the movies recently. Uh, you did a great job in her shoes. You, you played the, uh, the dad uh, to right. the two ladies. It's a good movie, isn't it? Yeah, it was. I was I, really surprised because I, I thought it was just going to be like a major chick flick. And right, then, right. you know, it just passed it off. But it ended up just being a, a tremendous movie. Yeah, it's, it's really a good film. And they were, they were all really fun to wear. I love Cameron Diaz. She's a delight. And Tony Collette. And I've known Shirley MacLaine for a long time, but never acted with her. And... Uh, it, it was really a lot of fun. And the, the other film I'm in is Dreamer, and I, I think that's a really good film, too. It's that's a great family film. It, I mean, yeah. you, all ages. Exactly, yeah. And I also look forward to seeing uh, the, the White Shadow season two. Thanks.